It's really, truly an honor to be here today. We have a, a friend of ours just walked in, uh, Congressman John Carney, who's here early. I think he's speaking later on. But that, let me start with uh, probably 5,000 feet. Same guy who, who spoke, I'm sure, earlier is here with us. Um, you know, the United States, for a lot of reasons, Delaware, for some reasons, because uh, the uh, distribution of wealth is a problem. And we feel it in almost everything we do. That there's fights with almost every police issue where they didn't used to be. But let me talk specifically about the Muslim community. I think that uh, it's a community that has been isolated for too long, that uh, no one knows, except they're all technicians, doctors, but uh, it's a kind of a seen by most people as a secret society. One of the things we've got to do is begin to open that up by we have committees in Newcastle County, where it's, whether it's planning, diversity, board of adjustment, you've got to begin to take time and get involved. You've got to begin to take time to get involved with the democratic process. 27 committees, democratic committees in Newcastle County and probably the same amount of Republican committees. You've got to take time to become committee people. And then you have to take time and have somebody run for office because the good thing about Americans, if if you're involved in a political process, um, the, everybody fights together. Money's allocated politically. And when you are all professionals, but when it comes to those kind of things, you become isolated, it's a very dangerous thing. About a year and a half ago, the chief and I and others said, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see the Arab world is breaking down among us. Uh, the Arab Spring didn't work, we're going to soon have problems in our homeland. And what do we know about our Muslim community? Not much. And we began meeting. And at first, I think there was some mistrust. Why do you want us to talk to you? And we began a series of great meetings, and we're coming up with a great program. And basically, it was our feeling that this stuff is going to continue, this phobia. Something's going to happen around us, and then we've got to worry about our own homegrown people. Sam and I know it wasn't 15 years ago we were dealing with KKK right here in Delaware, right over the line. We have a lot of people. What we thought was going to happen and could happen is that there'll be backlash from somebody that stole your religion and called their self ISIS and they do something. So what can we do? Well, we had to build a relationship so that uh, a group core of Muslims could come in the police department in 15 minutes notice. We put a thing called a fusion center in where it's 20 TVs that will hook up to your mosque. Now how that's going to work, we had to develop an app. And this app would allow if there's a problem you hit the emergency button and up comes your cameras on our screens. We can't do it has to be done for you. You have a lot of IT people, so I know you can make sure that it works that way. That app just got developed, but in the interim, we have many meetings because what has to happen is, as doctor said, a core of your leaders have to have the ability to call the chief of police or the command staff and say, I was followed home today. I've got a suspicious car out in front of my mosque. We've got somebody stalking our school. And that's not a 911 call, that's a call to the command staff. And they have to know personally your leaders and say, this is, we're gonna take this serious. That relationship is ongoing. We have a meeting on the 10th to finalize it. So that if we have a level of uh, trust, so if we think there's gonna be some backlash, maybe level one, we have a police car at every one of your centers. You know, there's some level, maybe we're inside your centers. But there had to be a trust that you give us the description and the inside of your schools and the inside of your mosque and the inside of your cameras in the event that we do have a terrorist attack. And that process is ongoing. It's completed. We're having a really great meeting on the 10th where we think we're going to finalize that outline. And it involves, if you can imagine, we get a, by the way, the FBI truly thinks very highly of our Muslim community. And that's just not a, Jeff, the chief can talk about that. 
they believe that uh, we need to be very, very vigilant. And he tells us and shares with us everything that's going on. And we have a group that we can share with now. So that if you get this level of threat, we mobilize within 15 minutes. In the room comes the colonel, the state police, the colonel, the county police, the paramedic chief, head surgeon at Christiana Hospital, the fire chief. And from this room, we deploy resources. And I think one of our biggest tests was uh, a homicide that took place in your community uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And not to talk too much about it, but uh, we responded within a few days, made an arrest, the person that did it, we contained the press, and nobody got injured. And that's the kind of priority we give your community as we give every community. But I can't emphasize enough that you got all these great professionals I've never arrested a Muslim child, and I have 23 years in policing, believe it or not. I was a patrol officer all the way up to Colonel. John over here helped me get promoted to chief. And uh, I went to FBI school, Secret Service school, police executive school, every school you can name. And when you had one problem with one person, you thought you might have had the plague or something. It's a great community full of great professionals so why is there all this disconnect? We, um, we have a statewide TV show, and tomorrow, I believe, there's gonna be uh, use of that TV station for your programs. We need to get out in the public. We need to talk about your religion. We need to talk about how you value life and that your religion is being stolen by a few bunch of nuts just like the KKK and everybody has their fringe crazy people. Uh, these aren't your people, but without the public knowing what that school, what that thing is, that mosque next to them, uh, there's a temple, Indian temple in Hokesson, and people are scared about it. You know, we need to hold county events there. We need to hold civic associations there, but more importantly, I know all the doctors and technicians and all the people that have got all the great jobs, you gotta take time out and you gotta get involved in the political process. And that does take time. Uh, we were proud to say that we hired our first Muslim paramedic in the last class. We opened the county up to anybody that can afford to take less money like that to come to work for us. But uh, we walk the talk. We believe that um, the fastest growing community there the sooner we can uh, open up what's the believed to be, you know, uh, isolated community, I think we can fix this problem real quickly because you have great families with great values that the rest of the state could use, the rest of this country could use. And we're one government, and John feels the same way with the state. It's time to uh, break this veil of secrecy and talk about the great community that you are. And with that, we're gonna continue on, and I don't know if you wanna introduce the chief or you want me to.